Hi everyone, we're in Mark's place today and this is Mark. Hello everyone. And we are going to show you what Mark has done with his above ground composter over the last year. So I'll just pan around to that. And there is his above ground compost system in the back of his garden, nicely hidden. He has found over time he's had to put that bit of mesh on the top, but I'll explain that to you a little later why. And we're going to take this out now and empty it out and show you what it's done over the last year. So we've moved the pot out into the garden now and we're going to tip it into this bowl here. But I want to show you inside first. Now Mark said he filled this up about uh, roughly a month ago and it had a lot of coffee stains in it. Oh sorry, coffee grains in it. And it's become too dense. He thinks it needs cleaning out. So let's have a quick look first before we do anything. Smells all right. Um, it still needs a little bit of further decompos decomposing, I can tell by the smell, but that's pretty good. That could easily go in the bottom of here now. Like I sometimes use that to pack around the sides if I want to get rid of it, if I don't have time to put it anywhere. But you could easily put that around your garden. But I can see a lot of that's coffee. Is that a soldier fly there? Let me just there, see? Oh, I can't tell, no. So it doesn't look like there's any soldier flies in there now at the moment. But that's inside the pot. Now, without digging right down the bottom, which is pretty hard. Actually, can I take this out and put it in yeah. this little bowl here? Ooh, the dog having a little sniff. Ah, <laughs> oh, look, there is some soldier flies just down there. There's one there. So they're working, still working in the bottom there, which means there's still some waste to... Um, there's one there. Mm -hmm. Looks like, see that one there? It's Under my thumb there. Teeny yeah. with them there. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? Sometimes they're right up the top and other times they're right down the bottom. So there we go. Yep, there they are, still in there. So there's still a way to go for that. But that's not too bad. That's not, that's not on the nose at all. That's pretty good. And that's not a bad result, really. You could easily empty that into those other above ground ones that you've got, which I'll explain to everyone in a minute. But let's take this pot out now and show you underneath here. There's a soldier fly just there too. And let's see what it looks underneath. Now as you can see, Mark has put a piece of Rio in here. See there, that, that wire there? That's so the pot sits high in the pot. Otherwise, as the soil all drops down, the pot will drop down as well. So this way the pot doesn't drop and just the soil drops. And you can see how the soil has dropped below that Rio. And he packed this up. He's had this going for about a year, but before was it winter that you packed it up with some mulch? September. September. He packed it up with some mulch under here and put the pot back in. He puts a lot of shredded paper around the outside because he produces an enormous amount of shredded paper. But I have to tell him that that is too dry. That needs to be more moist. And I would personally put that in and then cover that so the moisture stays in the paper and it will break down quicker. Whereas it's drying out too much like that. And that makes it very hard then for anything to break down. So it's much better if it's moist and covered with something so it retains the moisture in the paper. But we're going to tip it out now and have a look. Let's just take a little bit off bit by bit first and just see what that's like under there. See all those worms? Oh my God, look at the worms there. Look at them right there. That's a beautiful result. Now see, they would be breaking that down if it was wet. Wow, that's fantastic. And you know what else too? This is a um, like a ceramic pot, right? Mm -hmm. So it's probably nicely insulated as well. So you're getting that insulation. And there's some other little critters there, see that? That's all good. I've got that on the video. Yep. Let's bring that up close and show you all. You can see all the little, all the little worms there. Oh wow, now look at that. Yep. Bring it up a bit closer. See all the worms there? And now that's a fantastic result to show how the worms will travel up. And you didn't add worms to this, did nope. you? You just let them come yep. from the garden. Yep. And they've travelled all the way up to the top there, which is amazing. It was that's initially... awesome. It was initially filled with all mulch. Okay, and then you've just added no the soil. paper, no soil. No. Okay, no soil ever no at soil. all. There no. you go. And did you add a lot of water to it as you went? Yeah, or? I did. I, okay. So the water when you hose the garden, I just 
spread awesome. the soil. Awesome, awesome. So that's one of the things that you really need to keep your soil moist if worms are going to survive in. I was just at a lady's house and her soil was so dry that nothing could move through it. But this is beautiful. This looks awesome. So I don't think... Um, it's just that shredded paper on the top that really hasn't broken down. And well, it, it, like, it does break down. I, I wasn't long ago, a couple, yeah. couple of weeks ago I put it in there. I yeah, just, it's only new. Yeah. Yeah. But everything else you can see is just amazing. Okay. And you know, now that we're pulling this apart, there's two things you could do with all of this. You could go and put that all back on the garden somewhere because it's all fully turned to soil. Um, or what else could we do with it? What's that? That looks like a, oh, a bit of bark. Oh, that's a bit of bark. That's going to take a Fair while point. to break down. Yeah. yeah point and there's a soldier flow there. Look. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. I mean, that's an awesome result. I love seeing this. We keep. Um, I feel like I'm going to hurt the worms. You know. Mm. They are everywhere. There's plenty of them. Yeah. We don't need to go searching at all. But it just shows to people that they will come up. And there weren't really any worms inside the pot where the soldier flies were. So it still wasn't the right environment for them in the pot, but perfect environment for them outside the pot. And that's exactly what you want, because this is what they do to your soil over time when they're outside the pot. Whereas when they're inside the pot, they don't spread their castings or break down what's inside the pot. That's for the soldier flies. Look at that pile there. This is too exciting. <laughs> it's incredible. A worm farmer would be very envious of that. Oh, God, yeah. Look at that. That's amazing. Now, I think I think this is a, a really, really... Um, this might not work in a really, really hot garden this mm. high because it might get too hot, but your garden's beautiful and cool, which is perfect condition clearly for the worms. Okay, should we try and check that out now, do you reckon, or...? We know what we're going to get, but what we want to do now is we, we're going to take this all out and we're going to have a look at these other pots and we're going to fill this up then with the contents from those pots as a way of quickly getting rid of those pots and giving him more space to fill up those pots and then just see what happens over time, but I know it'll disappear. Now, if you had a... Um, those, those composters that sit on the ground, those big wide ones that sit on the ground, you won't get that result because it gets too hot in the centre right. and because this isn't so dense. <laughs> That's going to be really hard, isn't it? Not don't break the... Don't break the um... So I think I'm going to have to... I need a bit of muscle. So again, that... Yeah, I think... Oh, you might have to pull that out. Yeah, I will. <laughs> You know, um, that, that then is an issue then for some people, is that they might not want... Oh, look, you've got the holes in there. Yeah. Oh, you put it through the holes. Yeah, I just want to remember which way I put it in. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, so you can push it out and pull it in sort of thing. Yeah. Otherwise, it would just slip. Yeah, I'm with you. Let's see that. Because that's angled up that pot, couldn't you have just bent the sides up so that it just sat in at a certain level? Yeah, it's about getting the right size. Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> That's pretty tough Rio. Uh, no, it's not too bad. Now, if you were watching my videos on YouTube the other day, you'll know that it wasn't as hard as this to empty my pots. <laughs> So use something smaller if you find that easier for you. That's just what I had, that's all. Yeah, I'm saying this to the customers. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so look, that hasn't fully, that's all grass clippings in the bottom. Was that, would you say that was from the original stuff you put in the bottom? Yes, it, okay. um, yes it was. Okay. And it was, um, it wasn't grass clippings, it was a combination of a couple of different types of mulch. All right, then look, there's solver flies down there. Yeah. So it's interesting though that right deep, deep down, it hasn't really decomposed that fast. Yes. And that's something I find with big bay composters and things like that. Yes. Unless you're turning them all the time, they take forever to break down. Right. And that's actually proven that point right, right down the bottom there. But above that, it's starting to break down, see? Yeah. Let me just see if that's in the video. It is. 
You might keep that grassy stuff separate maybe, do you, want, do you think? Yeah, put that back in on top. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. So there's some more there. So that, that bottom bit, but that would break down eventually, but it's going to take a long time. So when I pulled my pots apart the other day, and they were only about this high, all decomposed, everything, nothing. And that was only after three months. Right. So this has been in the ground for a year, but it's a much taller pot, so you're going to get a different result. And But it's still a good result in the middle there. It's incredible. So it's going to take a little bit longer than a smaller pot, but it doesn't really matter, does it? As long as it's disappearing into the soil all the time, you're all right. But that's stopping it, see? Right. So it's, it's kind of now that it, it got to a point where it was couldn't really empty well, out anymore. Well, I just put more soil in, in the bottom. So, so if we put the soily stuff back in, then the bottom, that would be better, wouldn't it? Um, and then before you start to mulch. Probably, if the worms are going to come right up to the top yeah. and break down the mulch at the top, then in that height, probably, <laughs> yes. But I wouldn't even do that. I'd put all your paper down the bottom. Oh, yeah. And just keep, yeah. and then every now and then just lift your pot out and shove it with more paper right down deep, and it'll just keep disappearing then. Right. Because you've got that, because you've got that thing in the middle yeah. that's, um, and it's so tall. Yep. The the only problem you're then going to have it'll disappear too quickly, because as you fill the pot up, if you've got yep. the pot in the middle, mm. and you're putting all your waste in there with all that water, the water will wet all the paper, yep. and it'll compact down really quickly. Right. So if you think you haven't got enough space for your paper, you'll have plenty of space if you do it like that. Right. And then you wouldn't really, that would easily last you more than a year and you wouldn't have to empty it. Because this is a year, right. and you can see that that bit at the bottom hasn't fully broken down. Right. If that was paper, it probably would have. And um, you might find it actually really hard to keep up to it. You know, you might find it you need um, more paper. In which yeah. case then, put your grass clippings around it. I don't your... have grass clippings. Oh, okay, yeah. Grass. Or, um, what else would you use? It's in there, can you grab some of that stuff, isn't it? Oh, that's about it. You know, yeah, it? I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry about those bits around the side. Right. Just leave them there. Um, so let me just get a, a, a bit more of a, a close-up of that so that I can see. Long way away. See, the bottom stuff was actually more, so it looked like a layer in there. Yes, it did. That's it what could, I mean. It could be where I chopped it up, you know. It, that, that is probably what's happened, yeah. That's where I think I might have topped it up in September. Where that layer of grass yeah, is? Yeah, because I, I took that out. Right. And then I shoved more... Oh yes, okay. You put I wasn't writing of... stuff down then, but... Oh, okay. So you put a whole lot of stuff in on top of it. Yeah. But this grass here was probably the original stuff you put in a year ago. No, no, I don't think so. Yeah, that layer, I think it's the stuff I put in in September. Okay. As I said, I pulled the pot out. Yeah. And, and I shoved it full of... Um, okay. Then, um, this stuff actually. I right. think that's is, and that's sugar cane mulch. Oh, okay. That'll be well, that'll explain now, it. Now, there's another thing. So, here's, a, here's an interesting point about the cover that was on top of the pot, the wire that Mark put on top of the pot. He noticed that um, when he put pistachio shells in the compot, it seemed to attract the rats. Now, I also believe sugar cane mulch attracts rats as well because for some reason the heat seems to release the molasses smell in the sugarcane mulch. So I'm actually not a fan of sugarcane mulch in covering these because I think the, the smell, I've done it in like Perspex pots and I can smell this smell of molasses coming off it and it's the only time I've ever had a rat dig in it. So that might be another reason yep. why it could have been the pistachio shell with that molasses yep. smell coming up, attracting them to the pot. So maybe leave the sugarcane mulch out next yep. time and um, put it around the garden where it's more likely to say dry out. Well, the odour is more um, less concentrated in the garden than mm -hmm. it is say inside a pot. Does that make sense? Yep. And leave the pistachio shells out and see what happens. But I think put all this dense stuff back in the bottom. Yeah, that's with your um, hoop pine. Hoop pine, yeah. It, it doesn't long... break down very well. Well, it'll take a long time. But if you put that right down the bottom, it will eventually. But it has to be wet all the time, which this is. This is beautiful and wet. I reckon though we should fill the pot up again mm -hmm. with take the contents out of all these other pots that you've got that are all half mm -hmm. full. So put a bit of this in the bottom as a base. It's already got the base in there. Oh, yeah. What did you put in? Did no, you no. put some in? No, no. You said to stop digging it out. There's that, that, that oh, is there? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so leave that like that. Mm -hmm. And then let's fill it with the contents from all the pots that you've got around the garden. And then put some shredded paper in on top of it if you've got any handy. and. Let's go with a new empty pot again and see how and see how it goes. 
I haven't got shredded paper actually. Oh well, don't worry, do it next um, time. Yeah, because... We could put all this in. Um, Let's put that back in. Because it wasn't that long ago that I actually emptied my whole thing. I'll have, go up and have a look. There might be some. I think mm. There could be some. I'll, have, I'll go up and have a look. Oh, look, it's no big deal. You can do it any time. Yeah. But let's put that in on top of it. So we'll, we'll put all the contents of the pots yeah. around the garden. But what I'd like to do is I bought some bowls and if we scoop the contents of each pot out into the bowls and have a look yep. at what they're each doing yep. in those pots because yep. that gives people an idea as well. Right. But um, I think that's pretty damn beautiful soil. Like there's nothing wrong. You could put no, that in and, a... Um, and it smells good. Yeah. It just smells like... It smells incredible. Yeah. You could put that in a pot plant easily, but I not still, too concentrated. Well, that's the other thing. It's really hard to know. I would I was going to say I'd mix it with some basic dirt as well, so it's not too rich. And if you want to make some worm tea out of it, just take a handful of that, put it in a bucket of water overnight, and there's your worm tea. Look at the rats. See, that's what the rats. Yeah, the, yeah. See that? Now, see that's not so bad. That's just yeah. one. And yeah, they did fine. that to mine too. Yeah. And um, I showed that on my video as well. I showed that a rat had got in, mm. but. Um, I don't look after mine very well either, and um, mine had dropped right down mm. to there. Yeah. So if, I've always found as long as you're packing it up and you're keeping it packed up, you don't have a problem. But again, sugarcane mulch and um, pistachio nuts. And maybe there are some other things that rats are particularly drawn to. Yeah. But I don't know what they are yet because I really haven't had a problem except recently when I did this above ground and because I wasn't monitoring them all the time. I've got a couple at the moment under my house that I'm doing some more tests on with coir peat to see how coir peat works with it. And I've got a grill on top of it with a big hole in the middle. Now, if a rat was going to get in there, they'd easily get in through that hole. Yeah. No rat in there yet. Right, yeah. So, why, I don't know yet. I've got to finish right. the test and see. So, what say we do that? Have a look at the other pots yeah. and empty a couple out into one of those bowls that I've got right. and see what the contents are like yep. and then, you, then you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six pots, new pots you can start filling again. Yep, right, yep, she's right. Right now. So here's Mark's first pot and he did this quite some time ago. This was his first pot he put in the ground and he's got this wire above it again because the pistachio shells were attracting the rats. Now I suggested to him that what he do with this wire is cut it around there and put it underneath the rim of the pot. That way then you're stopping the rats from digging around there, but you can still access the lid really easily and empty, put your waste into your pot whenever you want, instead of going through this bit of a, a rigmarole to get it off. Which I can't. I think there's one in the ground there. Here we go. So I'll just put those there. Still in the picture. So here we go. This was empty, filled up. 31 days ago. Mmm, look at that, beautiful. Let's have a look and dig in. This had a lot of coffee grounds in it by the looks. Mm -hmm. Actually, let's put it. We're going to take these out anyway. We're going to put it into that. Oh, look at the soldier flies in there, Mark. Look. Mm. Bunch of little baby ones. Is that another picture? That's awesome. So we're going to put that in there. We're going to empty this out. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to put it inside that big above ground composter and then let it break down slowly over time. So this way, instead of trying to bury this into his garden, which you can see is covered in mulch, it's probably pretty hard for him to try and find a place to bury it. So this way we can get rid of it into the above ground system. And now we've got an empty pot we can start filling again. So once we do this to a few pots, he will be well and truly ready to start his summer composting. And this has probably slowed down a little bit now. Oh God, look at them all there. There's hundreds of them. Now there's absolutely no smell in that. Can you smell it? No. No, no smell. Oh, and you can see the worms on the outside there too. Out, out, that's what you want. The soldier flies on the inside and the worms on the outside. Perfect solution. That's good enough. So that is beautiful. Okay, so will I leave this, I might as well leave that cover off now because there's nothing to go in there. So mm -hmm. when you yep. go to fill it up again, then you can put the cover back on. And so will I leave those there for you? Yeah, so you know where they are. <laughs> Look at the dog on the back of me. Take a video. <laughs> Hang on. There can you see him? Yeah. Oh, lots of mozzies here. Hello, little one. 
Off you hop. <laughs> you're having fun. You're having fun, Jan? Mm, oh, you're gorgeous. Oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> oh, you are so cute. <laughs> you adorable little thing. Okay. Let me, um, so what I do, I just normally flick it back. Oh, okay. All I right, just cool. take yes. it off one end yep. and then just okay. peel it back. And see, if it was if it was around the sides there, you wouldn't have to worry, yeah. would you? Oh, there's a lot of coffee beans in that. Uh, okay. But it might not be a good one to show everyone. And but. how many? Oh no, that is a good one to show because you said the coffee goes really slow, and it, it, you, because you have so much coffee, you found it's made them too slow. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some soldier flies in there, which is good. See that? But again, as you said, maybe a bit too slow. Yeah. These aren't ground coffee greens, though. No, they they, no. I had a packet, a packet that went off that oh, I see. that okay. I never ever used, okay. and I and I thought I'd give it a go, see what happened. But yep. Obviously, it's going to be a lot slower. Yes, and I would, if it had been me, I probably did you soak them at all, actually? No. No. See, Just I probably would have soaked them in water overnight yeah. to really soften them, and what it does, it, it reconstitutes. Yeah. Um, all the stuff as well. So the ground stuff would always be in water because I would have put it straight into the water and it would have been four or five days in water. Oh right. The ground, the ground stuff. Yeah, the stuff from, you mean the stuff you collect from your kitchen all the time that you yeah. soak in the water? Yeah. yeah. But the coffee that but went in there. the coffee grains, you're putting them in dry, yeah. you see? And if they go in dry, it'll just take forever to break them down. Sorry, you mean the beans? Yeah. Yeah. The, the ground stuff goes in wet. So you've had it soaking in water, the, and then you the put the ground it in. stuff. Yes, yeah. goes in with all the other veggie with all scraps, the other stuff, and it gets sits in water. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good, but as you say, it's probably just too much because you just have yeah. so much coffee. Mm -hmm. We've got some nice soldier flies in there, but it has got too stodgy. Yep. Which means it's not emptying. And have you ever emptied this at all? Yeah. Oh yeah. So you emptied course. it a few times. Yeah. Mm. I think you're going because your garden is just a little bit different, and you haven't got that heat on the garden. I think you're going to have to have those ones above ground mm. and utilise it more mm. and say, I would have to, you know. Yep. But again, I wouldn't do this but once every six months. So to me, I don't want to make it too much of a chore. Mm. So if you could get this to a point where you only do it once every six months, and look, there's worms in the bottom of there, look. Mm. Which means it's been in there a while. You've had stuff in the bottom of there for a while. Yeah. And it probably really needed a not, good not 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 too long. Not like too these long? Th these were every single pot was emptied in the beginning of the what I call the compot season. Okay. <laughs> uh, which is around about the end of August, beginning of September. They were all empty. Okay. So October, November. That's only two months. Yeah. Mm, interesting, because in two months that might have been empty. So I think it's just because your conditions of the cooler environment in your garden. So no, but it's it's. It's not two months since I put anything in it. It oh. was I, it was all empty. To, they were all emptied. Every compot was emptied mm -hmm. at the beginning of the compot season, mm -hmm. which was end of August. End of August. So and then it You've was just last. You've just been topping it up. That's right, and it was last filled um, uh, about three weeks ago. Okay, so that's roughly every three months you might need to do this. Whereas right. I probably do it once a year. Yeah. Yeah. And that may well have to do with... Let's just, let's just see if we can lift this out and see what your soil's like underneath it. Now it's never going to go right back into that same spot now that I've done that. <laughs> um, so that's pretty good. It's quite dense though, the soil under here. But Oh, there's lots of worms in there though, look. Mm. Yeah. It's still a bit dry down there though. See, it's it's... It's damp, but it's not wet. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, you wouldn't call that really wet. No. So, but it's not drenched. So, if it's, and that's quite dense. So, does that, you know, I always find that if it's too dense, then the, oh, there's a root there. Then we don't, oh, there's a big wormy, look at that. Did I cut him? Yeah, it's right there. There's yeah. plenty there. Yeah. Um, so if it's too dense and too dry, the co the moisture won't go into the soil because it's got nowhere to go. It can't get through dense soil. But that's looking pretty good, I reckon. What do you think? Mm. Like to me, that's beautiful soil. What do you reckon? Yeah. And it's, all, all it's, that is mulch on the top there, mm. which will take a while to break down. It's fairly heavy clay content in the soil. Yeah. 
Well, again, yes. And we didn't know that when we first started this test, did we? Like, yeah. if did you dig around this and put yeah. cheap soil around it? Yeah, no, I had, did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And I dug uh, about half the depth of the pot, pot again. underneath it. Yeah. Not too bad. See, it never quite goes back into where. Do you want me to dig that in a bit more? Do that. It never quite goes back in, unfortunately, to the same spot once you take them out. It's like anything, isn't it? Like so when I just you... get to the bottom and then just make it a bit. I'll just go down to the bottom and that makes it rain too. Oh, right, that's what you're saying. There we go. That's not too bad. That's not too bad, yeah. Pack up around there again. Okay. I think your thing just stopped. Oh no. So this pot, Mark has had uh, filled up about three weeks ago. So this will give you a bit of an idea of the difference. I'll just lift it back. Oops. <laughs> Video's going over. Now that's three weeks ago. Now in your garden, a pretty good result because you don't get a lot of sun in here so that's just disappeared in three weeks i reckon it's pretty damn good now that's nice and wet see how lovely and wet that is that's the difference it's really mushy that's what i like to see because then i know it's not drying out and i know they can eat it when it's mushy and it, it smells a little bit more when it's mushy when you disturb it but i think they work better when it gets a little bit too dry they just get a bit stagnant so see that there? See all the little soldier flies in there? Beautiful result. So let's dig that up. And and you know what? That's not even that smelly. Three weeks ago, and that doesn't even smell that bad, does it? Like there's no, an good. odor, but mm. it's not. No, it's it's not like oh my god, that's disgusting, is it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> But you couldn't smell a thing until I started digging. Now, we'll just show everyone at the bottom. So we'll come over to the pot. And we'll just get this last bit out. Okay, so empty there. So come over here. And you can see after three weeks at the bottom of those contents, and look, there's a, a lemon, uh, still need time to decompose. But again, there was plenty of room in that pot that you could just keep topping that up and that will all decompose slowly over time. As you saw in the other pots were about a month old. They were a much more um, decomposed state than this was. And do, when did you fill that up? Three weeks ago, we said, didn't we? That's right, okay. three weeks yeah. ago. All right, so let's put that in the, in the pot. And look, we won't show everyone the other pots. We'll save it for the doggy doos. So, We'll go and empty them now, fill the big pot up, and then we'll go do the doggy doos, hey? All right. Okay. So just stop that. So we put the pot back in the garden now, and we put four com uh, contents of compote underneath this, and we've packed some of the um, grass and paper around the outside that we pulled out of this pot before, and there's still plenty of space for him to put more paper, which he's going to do later. And that looks very, very dry. Anyway. And now that'll be good for another six months, easy, six months to a year. So now we're going to look at the doggy do. That's, that's the current one. So Mark's got two, three pots going for his doggy do's, two of mine and an Enso pet. I think it's an Enso pet. And he has found that the compote works faster. And I had a look at this before. You can see soldier flies buzzing around in there. Oh, look at that. There's the proof that they love doggy do's. But, oh, that's stinky. Oh, yeah, that's a bit woofy. Um, I'd definitely be watering that. But you know what I find? If you put a bit of food waste in there with it, mm -hmm. the bugs will work better because they seem to almost get bored eating just dog poo all the time. They tend to slow down, a bit like the coffee. They tend to get a bit sluggish. So if you put a little bit of food waste in there with the water as well. And will you put in some bran in here, some EMO, effective microorganisms? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's yeah, in so the that's sawdust. What that is that sawdusty yeah. stuff is, yeah. yeah. And th that wouldn't be hurting it. They're microbes that will be breaking that down too. But those soldier flies are what will be making it disappear fast. Look at that. Stinky though. That stinks. Didn't smell it a minute ago. That's beautiful. 
But if you, again, if you want to stop that smelling like that, just put a little bit of, um, oh, you haven't got grass clippings. I just put some grass clippings on top. Oh, yeah. But anyway. But that's it. the sawdust I put in there every day stops that. Oh, awesome. Okay, excellent. I just put it. It's, it's I, only because I disturbed I, it that you yeah. can smell it. So yeah. when I put it on, yeah, I don't, it normally doesn't come out. And I normally I can't just, really I smell that now. Oh, okay. So there's the brand that he puts in on top. Now you don't have to do that, but if you want to add some microbes to your doggy doos, you can do that with some um, what they call effective microorganism brand. I think that's what they call it, isn't it? And here's the Enso Pet. This that stuff comes with the Enso Pet. Actually, I'll swap your sides because then I can dig. And how long ago was it since you filled this up? It was a while, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, that was yeah, so you, quite that, some time. You had to let it sit for a while. The other ones have gone back and forward um, a couple of times. Let's have a smell. That's pretty much soil now, though. But um, it's a little bit woofy still, a little bit tiny when I separate that. I can smell it. Um, let me just go and get one of my bowls so I can empty it out into it and have a decent look and see what we've got down the bottom. Okay, so let's dig this out and have a look. I was at someone's house one day, I don't want to say this, and this was full of roots. So I'm glad to see that yours isn't. Now, there's no base on the bottom of this, so it's, I find that interesting as a, um, if you've got worms that are going to keep coming up, what I find that with the Enso Pet, and not that it's a bad thing, if it gets full of worms, they try and fill it up with soil all the time, so you have to empty it more. But this is pretty much soil, it's still stinky though. The question is, what do you do with this? You can't really put... No, there's dog poo down here that isn't decomposed. See there, right down the bottom? Mm. You can't put that on the garden like you can put the other stuff no. on the garden. So mm. you'd have to let this sit for a lot longer. And in all honesty, I would even add some worms to that now to try and see if they can break that up more. So worms? Yeah, or leave the lid off and um, see what... You might get a few rats in there, catch a few rats, kill a few rats. <laughs> but you did say the soldier flies got in here at one point, but there's none here now. Oh, there was there some day today. I was found there? Them. Yeah, definitely. Look, I can see them moving. Look, all through there. Look, see that? Oh yeah, there are, are a couple. There's oh no, some there's there. the big heap of them. Was if there? you really look carefully, and okay, there's little ones little... and bigger ones. Um, they were close to the top. Actually, didn't look, we? Look just... at them all down there. Look at that movement. Look at all that. Oh, okay. They're everywhere. Let's go get it. So if you've got the soldier flies in here, is that on the video, by the way? Are you missing it? Sorry. No, it's coming. Oh, okay. You've got my arm. Um. Oh, yes, there are some. So if you can get the soldier flies in there. Well, that's smelling really sumpy down the bottom now. Mm. Um, there's a few. The only thing is, the only thing is with the doggy do, this is a little bit slower in there, you're going to have to leave it longer to fully mm. decompose before you can actually use it. Mm. Whereas if it disappears a bit quicker in the compot and breaks down quicker, you can use it quicker. Mm. That would be my only, the only difference that I could see with one from the other. Like if they're still going to work, then that's great. And look, I this will, might I was suit. going to replace this with a compot. Oh, okay. That was one of the three I was getting off here. Okay. One of those I was going to... Um, this might work for some people, this type of system that have got really bad digger dogs mm. because they can't get in um, mm. at the side like they can mm -hmm. uh, my system but um, you'd have to try it you know mm. you've got to know your dog and some dogs nothing will stop them digging stuff up but because of the shape of these these aren't so easy to get out mm. whereas the compote is shaped in the opposite direction so it's easier to get out these are quite hard to get out yep. But still, like, I wouldn't call that a bad result. It's mm. just definitely slower. And it's still, it's still a little bit smells of dog poo down the bottom. 
I don't even know where the bottom is to tell you the truth. So there is no, I don't know whether I'm... They're pretty deep. Oh, okay. It, it, it tucks in. Yeah. So, look, the other thing is, Mark, is to just leave this and keep filling it up and with your dog poo and just see what happens. Like, see how long it actually takes. Or can you just constantly... It was full. Oh, it was full. So it has gone down. Yeah. So is it just because it's, it's not fast enough that you prefer something to be well, faster? Well, either that or I'll have to have some additional... Additional ones. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, okay. Well, that makes so sense. if I get... Um, if I can do with three, I will, but... Yeah. Um, I guess I can put um, another compot in anyway. Yeah. And still keep this one going, so I've got four, I guess. Yeah. It's up to you, I suppose. Two dogs. Yeah. And dogs poo a lot, don't they? Yep. So I wouldn't be putting that on your garden. But you know what? You could put that now into... Let's go and show people the above-ground system that you've done with some of your waste from your compost. So let's go and show them how you're doing that with those little pots. Mm -hmm. And you could actually put that into one of those pots. Yep. So then you've got it above ground and the worms will start coming up and breaking it down. Whereas that's really deep. You know, yep. if the worms aren't going to go that deep, they're not going to break down that stuff yep. down the bottom. Yep. And so you're limited as to what how it's going to break down. Yep. So let's go and show, or actually, let's look at the third one first, okay? The third pot. And then we'll go and show them above the above ground one, the, the little one. So this is the third one he does for the doggy doos. Oh gee, when did you fill that up? Uh, it's probably been a couple of weeks, three weeks since, I've, since it's okay. been full. That's not too bad. Now, I can't smell anything yet, but let's have a whiff. Oh no, that doesn't smell at all. Hmm, hardly at all. Tell me if I'm lying, smell that. No. It's not that bad. I don't think I'd want to eat it, but it's Oh no, right. exactly. But there's not a there's not a, a doggy smell like there no. is in the Enzo Pet one. That no. was a bit doggier still. Um, but that's still got a bit of way to decompose. Mm -hmm. You can see there's still a little dog, see that there? That's a mm -hmm. little bit of dog poo that hasn't quite decomposed. But that's certainly on its way. And it looks like the soldier flies might have vacated, which again, if you put a little bit of food waste in there with that, I reckon you'll find that'll break down they'll start chomping through that again. Oh. That'd be my thought, rather than, again, where are you going to empty dog poo? Unless that's fully decomposed, you really can't put that anywhere, can you? Yeah. So right. you've got to, you really need a, as you say, a couple more, so you've got mm. that mm. one that's fully decomposed before you empty it. Yep. But that's dropped in volume significantly. Yeah, quite a lot. In only a few weeks. A few weeks, yeah. Mm. Oh, I, I'm pretty happy with that result. Mm. Um, again, just add more, add food waste in there with water as a bit of variety for the bugs. Mm. And because they've all disappeared from there, um, maybe take some bugs out of another pot and put them in there to get it going again yep. with a bit of food waste. That'd be my thought. But let's go and have a look at, carry that around. In that one there, that's got the, what, the remnants of your compot doggy do mm -hmm. after it was all winter where I didn't feed it at all. And I put it in the bottom of that. Okay, so oh, everyone, this, is, this is how Mark, because he's got a very um, a cold garden, it's not a really sunny garden, it's a beautiful garden, but it doesn't get a lot of sun. So his compots are a lot slower in his garden. So with this doggy do one, he's got a nice little pot and he emptied it a couple of times into one of these pots, much the same as he's done with the really big above composter one. But this one doesn't have a compot in it. He's just emptied pretty much decomposed waste into the bottom of it and you can see he's covered it with a bit of shredded paper and um, leaves again the shredded paper is a bit too dry there I'd prefer if that was wetter oh look at the worms in there Mark holy dude look at the size of these things look at that and look how high they are up in that pot that's amazing that they've come that high up see if you've got an above ground composter one of those ones that sit on the ground it just gets too hot for them they can't get into the center of the waste but that's amazing so that's a really good result and let's see if we can dig down i should have put my oh look at the worms in there that's incredible now to me if you can compost like that with the compot and then every now and then give them a clean out, put them in one of these, you're laughing. You're doing everything you can possibly do in your garden. It smells beautiful too, and that was a doggy do. 
Oh, it's mixed up. Mixed up, but still smells good. And have you noticed this drop down much? Yeah. Yeah, so that's you just why, keep chopping it up. That's why the paper's there. Yeah, awesome. That's fantastic. And what about the rats getting in that because there's no cover no. on it? Never have. Then that could be because of the dog poo. That could be. Because if you put dog poo in things like that, there's a lot of... Um, it's kind of like marking territory for some animals. Yeah. So they don't go near it. So this one's got all different waste in it. Uh, yeah, no, no, do no, no doggy do. No dog do. Okay. And so there's some nice grass clippings on top there. Or oh, hay. Now, is this sugar cane mulch? Uh, it was. It was, okay. And did you have any rats digging yeah, in this? I did that. Too. Oh, sugar cane mulch. Yeah, right. Beautiful worms in there. So, um, what you would do, it would all depend what you want to do with this at the end of it, whether you just leave it until it all disappears into the soil below, which it will eventually over time. Oh, look at the size of that worm, will you? Did you add compost worms, or these are no. worms just from your garden? Yep. Look at that, what I, a beauty. It's now turned into, like everywhere I dig, if I'm digging a compot, there's just worms, worms everywhere. everywhere. It, no matter where I dig in the garden. Yeah, and, and it's turned this whole place into a worm, worm city. And it's really heavy, high clay content, so it's doing good. Good, but you know some of the reason too is because you're keeping your garden moist. Mm. That's the big difference, because they can't move through dry soil. But you know what, you could use that as a fishing worm. Look at the size of that. Mm. It's a beauty. Look at that one. Did that get in the video? Yep. That's amazing. I love that. So again, if you were going to then say put that in a pot plant or use it around your veggies, then you mightn't want to put dog poo in there. That's right. Yeah. But around your ornamentals, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I was, I was not putting dog poo and everything. I was just putting in, in one because I had to deal with it. So. Yeah. I reckon, that's a, I reckon that's a brilliant idea yeah. to give you that extra space and so you can you, so then you don't need as many pots necessarily. Yeah. So every now and then you give them an empty out there, almost decomposed, put them in one of those, yeah. cover it up, make sure it's nice and wet, and just so, let it finish it off the worms finish it off. So my rule of thumb was as soon as I start to see worms in the compot, that's when I'd put it in. Awesome. So I'd yeah. smell it. Yeah. And then as soon as I start to see the first worm, yeah. I'd put it put in. Put it in there. there. Good rule of thumb. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Thanks for watching.